In Simca 16, we have created a context-based side pane called the Data Explorer. It is providing additional information and tools related to the active window inside the Simca work area. The Data Explorer is combining existing but extended information side panes with some brand new ones. As with all other side panes, you can activate or deactivate them using the checkboxes in the View tab. You can also choose to have them pinned to a side or hidden and expandable. The Data Explorer pane consists of a header and a plot area. And if you like to access a specific tool, you can do a manual selection in the drop down menu. All tools have an additional options menu indicated by the three lines on the side of the, the selection. The content in this changes depending on the selected tool. Let's start to have a look at the quick info part of the Data Explorer, which will automatically be activated when it is appropriate for the active window. In this case, the data set. Quick info for the data set is nothing new, and you can, as before, select individual columns or rows to display the raw data. You can now see in the quick info here, uh, section that the active tab is variable, but you can manually switch mode by clicking on the, one of the other tabs. You can also customize the quick info view using the options menu. And you can see now that we have access to another set of objects than before. And as in previous versions, you can use the, the arrow keys inside the table to move between columns. And you can also do multiple selection in the data set to display several variables in the same plots. If you want to trim or winterize your data set, you now have access to this in the trimming section of the Data Explorer or directly here in the Quick Info pane. The Trim Wins functionality works as a find and replace function and you decide on what to find and which what, with what to replace it with. This functionality has now been modified and extended in accordance with customer requests. But important to remember is that when you're doing trimming on the data set, you are permanently changing the raw data and will automatically delete any models based on the old values. By default, the trimming uses a low and a higher limit, but you can change that by selecting some other option in the menu, like above, below, or you can also search for exact values or you can search for empty cells. The replace part is by default empty, which means it replaces with missing. But you can, of course, also control that. You can enter values, you can use last good value, or so on. And as before, you can also do your uh, limit selection directly in the plots. A new trimming functionality often requested by users with batch data is the possibility to trim by face. To show this, I need to switch to a batch project with multiple faces. In the Quick Info trimming section, you can now select to trim individual faces or combinations of the faces differently. So first I'll deselect all and then I decide on the face I want to trim, in this case chip, and I say that I want to trim everything that is above 110, replaced by missing. There we go. Then I say that I want to trim the acid face and I want to trim everything below 65 and replace by missing. Apply. And now we can see the effect of the trimming if we switch to the data set view of the quick info. So now we can see that we have done some trimming and there are missing values in there. Let's switch back to a regular project and have a look at some more Data Explorer functionality. When clicking on a model in the project window, the Quick Info displays some small uh, model plots summarizing the model that you are highlighting. 
And by double clicking on one of the small plots, it pops out and becomes a full size plot. The Data Explorer pane is now showing the properties section where you can control some of the plot properties like coloring or legends. And if you don't find the property that you want to change, you can always click on one of the wrenches like in the bottom of this menu or way down in the bottom. And then you get access to the full uh, properties dialog. And it's also accessible through the mini toolbar where you have the wrench symbol again. If you click on a specific point in the scatter plot, the quick info now displays the contribution for that plot. And if you click somewhere else in the plot area, it turns back into the properties. If you want to modify titles or axes, you need only to click on the object you want to change and the appearance section relevant to that appears. So now I can change my title and I can decide that I don't want to have the footer in the plot and so on. And if I click on one of the axes, the axis section appears and you can then change the size of them directly. And if you want to go back to the default settings and maybe save your new formatting as your default, you can do so from the options menu. You can save this as a default, or you can save it under a name, or if you click on the default, it turns back into what we had before. That concludes the introduction video to the Data Explorer pane. Hope you find this addition to Simca 16 useful, and keep your eyes open for more videos in the feed on the start page of Simca, or search for Sartorius Stedim Data Analytics on YouTube. Thanks for watching.